Well, it's it's not so much a breakthrough for CSIRO as as much as uh, a breakthrough for the uh, the people who have been uh, preparing for this for for quite some time. Uh, we didn't know what was going to come, but uh, we knew something would come simply because uh, seventy five percent of all new diseases of humans come from animals, uh, from wildlife, and uh, so it was very. Uh, anticipatory of, of CEPI, the Coalition for Epidemic Preparedness Innovations. Uh, and uh, I give huge credit also to our teams in, in uh, the Australian Centre for Disease Preparedness, uh, who, who have been uh, working very hard since October, preparing for disease X. And uh, suddenly we find ourselves right in the front line, uh, preparing for uh, receiving vaccines for uh, COVID-19. There is a, a sort of a, a process that uh, that, that all vaccines should follow, which is, first of all, there is uh, a lot of work done in designing the vaccine, followed then by uh, assessments uh, in, in, in plates and on, on cell cultures, uh, such as you see there. Uh, and then ultimately, we will uh, have the, uh, fine, the, the, the candidate product that we will then uh, put into an animal model. Uh, and this, de this allows us to demonstrate that the vaccine is safe, uh, early tests of safety, but also of efficacy. So we have to have a model where uh, the animal can become infected with the disease. And then by using that model, we can then demonstrate that the vaccine protects the animal. And once we're at that stage, we can then start to think about moving into uh, human trials. There's usually three phases. Um, phase one, which is to show safety. Phase two is in a very limited trial among a, a group of high risk individuals uh, who we, we would then vaccinate uh, and uh, they, they then monitor them over a period. Uh, and then finally, if, if that is shown to be safe and effective, then it goes into widespread uh, uh, use. Our race is against the virus, not against each other. There's a, a wonderful sense of uh, collaboration and cooperation, uh, people actively sharing information, even not having to be asked for it. The moment we, we find something is in some useful piece of information, it's published. There are some slight downsides to that because very often a lot of this information is published without actually being peer reviewed. So we do have to be quite careful in, in how we interpret data. Uh, a, a very good example is the, is the uh, story about the, the pangolins which were um, which were uh, have been suggested as being a potential source of this virus or or an intermediate host. In fact, when you actually look at the data, you see that uh, in fact the um, uh, the comparison of the of the genetic sequences. Yes, it's about ninety nine percent in a in a critical area of the receptor, but but over over the whole um, uh, genetic sequence, it's only about eighty five to ninety percent. So, in if I were a betting person, I would say that that virus did not come from pangolins and, and pangolins were not involved. But we have to wait and see. There's an awful lot of work going on to try and find the source.